Um, welcome everybody to the Area Planning Committee South and West of Thursday 16th of July 2020. Um, we, we are apparently all systems go and you are very welcome. Thank you for attending. Um, can I just remind everybody that um, this is going to be recorded and will be available um, on the internet for at least six months. Um, can all members please make sure that they have blurred their backgrounds that they have switched their microphones to mute, please. And um, don't forget to unmute them if you wish to speak. Please also members remember that you request to speak by typing the letters RTS, meaning request to speak, um, into the chat function. Um, sort of um, officers may raise their hands, but um, I will be only taking the people who, who put RTS on the chat function. Um, welcome to our guests. You are very welcome. We, we like to make you uh, feel comfortable and that um, you had um, a fair say in the process. Um, it's a yes or no situation. Some people will go away disappointed today, um, but hopefully you'll feel that um, your views were listened to and treated with the necessary respect. Um, I'm now beginning the um, uh, agenda. Um, apologies for absence. Chair, we've had no apologies for absence this morning. Thank you. Substitute members. Chair, there are no substitute members present today. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Nobody. Um, if you notice um, something when we get to a, uh, an agenda item, uh, don't forget to tell us. Um, minutes of the meeting held on the 23rd of June 2020. Uh, can I have someone to, um, oh, first of all, um, did anybody have any issues to raise on those? I'm getting no shakings of the head. Can I have somebody to propose them, please? Move, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Ivan Jewell. Thank you, Councillor Jewell. Seconded by? I can second that, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Atkinson. Um, right, we'll move to the items to be addressed. Um, Item 5A, DM 20, 0, 1148, full planning application um, for Barn 5, um, the granary at Holland Hall, East Gainford. Um, perhaps um, uh, we can have the officer give the um, uh, presentation, please. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Yeah, I'm Stephen Pilkington, the Principal Planning Officer for the Southwest area. I'll just load up the presentation. Stephen, I find you very, very quietly spoken. It's because you're such a gentle and lovely man. But if you could speak up, please, it would be... Uh, we're all a bit deaf. We're, we're of an age. Thank you very much. OK, I'll, I'll try and speak louder. Um, yeah, so this application seeks planning permission for the demolition and rebuilding of a barn to use the dwelling and the installation of a package treatment plant. This application is partly retrospective. The application site is highlighted in red to the north of Gainford. This is an aerial photograph of the site showing the application site and the wider complex on site, which is granted planning permission for conversion. The wider conversion scheme is in the uh, ownership of a third party. This is an image from 2018 of the barn in question. The stone built, it's a stone built structure with the red door and the adjoining sheeted structure. This is the barn from another angle. Got an aerial image provided by the applicant showing the barn in the context of the wider conversion scheme. Uh, you can just probably just about make out in the photograph at this point, the roof and sheeting were removed. The stone elements of the barn uh, of the building were still uh, standing. This is an image provided by the applicant in the applicant's submission, showing the further alterations of the structure, but some walls largely uh, remain intact. This is a drawn image of the barn showing the previous structure completely removed and new, uh, new walls built. There's another, uh, another image showing the barn and um, showing the rebuilt barn and in the context of the, of the wider site. This is an image of the new build with internal uh, block uh, leaf walls and stone facing. Okay, we've got another angle there. 
a proposed site plan. So the building is largely in the same position as the consented scheme for conversion. Other land within the applicant's ownership is shown in blue and the development in South is part of a conversion scheme for uh, holiday accommodation owned by the applicant. So proposed elevations of the new build barn, these be very similar to the approved conversion scheme. So I have 12 letters of support for the scheme. The council's design and conservation officers raised co uh, concerns over the quality of the stonework, advising if approved, this should match uh, that of a recently approved stone sample for the wider development. So in summary, the development would result in the formation of a new build residential dwelling in the open countryside in an isolated, unsustainable location, contrary to well-established development plan and national planning policies. It's also considered that the quality of the stonework has resulted in an unacceptable impact on the visual amenity of the site and wider rural landscape. Whilst appreciating the unfortunate circumstances that are led to the submission of the application, Overall, on balance, without the benefit of securing the optimal use of the heritage asset as it, as it has been demolished and the enhancement of the meeting setting through its reuse as per the original planning approval, the adverse impacts of the locational sustainability and visual impact are considered to significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits associated with the development and would not outweigh conflict with development plan policies and sustainability objectives of the MPPF. As such, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you very much indeed. Um, have any members got any questions um, immediately of the um, presentation? Thank you. I'm not getting anything out there for our intent to. Um, is um, Councillor James Rowlandson here, please? Uh, yes, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Rowlandson. Um, you've indicated that you wish to speak as the local member. You get to go first. Um, if you could tell us uh, your thoughts, please, that would be lovely. Right, thank you, Chair. Um, it's um, it, it's strange that uh, this uh, part of the development uh, is, is uh, been refused. Um, the development has already had planning permission and there are major changes uh, to the main house and the outbuildings further up and you've seen the picture of where it is. Um, uh, and to leave uh, the, the bottom part, a barn, um, uh, as uh, just a, an outbuilding it seems very strange at, at, at all. Um, uh, and barn five um, is part of the curtilage of the main house. So it isn't in isolation of, uh, of, of the main uh, planning permissions. So I, I can't see on EVN1 why it, it wasn't, uh, you know, as, as one of the reasons why it should be, uh, you know, left out. Uh, uh, and it will be extremely disappointing to Mr. and Mrs. Nichols and, and the daughter uh, not to be able to retire into where, you know, it's only, it's close to where they live. And um, it, it, to my mind, it, it, it seems, uh, you know, wrong not to be able to uh, have this converted and for them to retire into it. I, I accept that uh, possibly the, uh, the the materials used are, are maybe not uh, the, what the conservation officer uh, requires, but um, you know that could be straightened out and and, and redone. Uh, so uh, I would uh, I would hope that uh, uh, the uh, the planning committee might uh, look in favour of, uh, of of passing this, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rolson. Thank you for your uh, concise presentation. Um, uh, I have no objectors at all wishing to speak, um, but Mr. Nichols, are you present with us? I am, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, you'll be given five minutes to speak, Mr. Nichols. Um, what will happen is that Michael will interrupt you after four and sort of tell you that you have a minute left if you haven't finished. Um, so the, um, actually people find it most um, disconcerting to be interrupted. Um, just restart your sentence. Um, don't let it throw you off. Um, you're very welcome and we're very anxious to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah. Good morning to everybody. 
Thank you, Mr Chairman, for letting me speak. I also speak on behalf of my wife, Julie. Um, short resume, we bought Barn 5 in February as per your introduction with the expectation that would be our eventual dwelling when we retire from a tenanted farm in Summerhouse after 30 years of farming. Uh, we have to have somewhere to retire to. When we give up the farm, we have nowhere to live. So with that in mind, we bought, we bought Barn 5. In July last year, the previous owner removed the, the, the roof in, as you've seen in the photographs, and we feel it with the incessant rain and particularly wet, the bad weather of last year, it had a, quite an impact on those walls. And of all the buildings at Hollinall East, I was being stood on its own with no mutually supporting walls. You know, it, it was affected considerably. And with that in mind, uh, the, for the safety of uh, the guys that were uh, trying to convert it for us, they, they weren't happy with the condition of those walls. And um, we, we took the decision through health, concerns for health and safety to dismantle and uh, reuse the original reclaimed stone, keeping it within the, uh, the, uh, you know, the look of the rest of the development and the surrounding area. Council's enforcement officer then got involved and asked that we cease work uh, and submit a fresh application of which this is. Uh, we hadn't appreciated at that point that different planning permission would be required. We're farmers, not planning experts, unfortunately, that got so slipped up. It was an honest mistake and I'm grateful that it was acknowledged by the committee. Uh, we wanted to put things right. But obviously with COVID and one thing and another, it was very, very difficult to get in touch with anybody or get anybody to come out. Getting advice was extremely difficult. We did immediately stop all the works and then submitted this new application to try and regularise matters. And you can see from the submitted plans that the building we are proposing, and it has been already suggested in your introduction, it is virtually the same building that we're asking for as what uh, was agreed. It, there will be no material difference at all. Uh, the stonework at the moment on the barn, I know it's a concern of the council, but that is actually in its raw state at the moment, and I'm sure you all will appreciate that. It still needs to be pointed and finished, you know, because we stopped at a certain point that that work, that stonework wasn't finished. Having the conservation landscape officer around and approve that stone panel for the rest of the site, and we're using the same building firm with the same stonemason, of which there is only one, it's just one guy, it will have all the same style being crafted by the same person. So we're, we're quite satisfied that it will look in keeping. In our opinion, anyway, it will be in visual terms a very big necessary part of the overall development. Without it, amongst other things, the bin store at the gate would look severely uh, disconnected from the site, having that's, that's been already built. And the, the new rebuilt farmhouse, the large uh, new built garage block to the east of Barn 5 would just stick out very prominently. With the benefit of hindsight, however, we would have done things very differently. One minute. It must be remembered we're not developers. We're just a couple trying to stay in Teesdale where we've lived all our lives. Uh, it's taken us four years to find it. Obviously, with the thing with Fiona, we're living in Gainford, that would be an absolute lifeline for her being able to use the bus service into town and continue to have a lot of access to her support network. Um, the importance of this application, I cannot, well, it cannot be overemphasised. We haven't got a plan B at the moment. All our hopes and savings are tied to this development for our retirement and for Fiona. We understand that formal enforcement could be uh, uh, proceeded, but we would hope and trust with uh, that you know you'll take all this into account 
I know I'm probably waffling on a bit now, uh, but it's it, it is. Uh, I would therefore close by asking you all to approve it. If you have any questions, obviously I'll try and ask them. I'll try and answer them. Sorry for that. No, thank you, thank you very much, much, Mr. Nichols. That was spot on. Uh, very clear. Um, members, two things. Um, the first thing is is that um, Mr. Nichols' sound quality was coming and going. Is there anybody who um, didn't catch anything of what he said who might want to ask for clarification about any points? Please put RTS into your chat function. Now, now, I haven't got anybody expressing a wish to speak, so I'm going to assume that we're happy and um, we've all heard what he said. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Nichols. Um, to return to the planning officer, are there any comments that you would wish to make about that? Thank you, Chair. Um, no, I, I don't think there's anything I need to add to that. I think the, the, the matters are addressed in report and members are entitled to take their, to take, take their own view on the matter. Thank you very much indeed. Um, could um, I now throw it over to the uh, committee? Has anybody um, got any wish to speak? I have Councillor Tinsley first. Um, thank you, Chair. Really, just a point of clarification. Could um, Steve possibly just summarise what the current planning status of that building is, what there is permission for there on that building, and how that differs from what has been applied for in, in this application, just for clarity, really. It's quite complicated. Thank you. Yeah, so planning permission was granted for a conversion uh, of the building as part of a wider screen scheme. However, as the building has been demolished, it can't be converted and therefore there's effectively no planning permission for for that for that building. What the applicants now seeking is a is a retrospective application or part retrospective application for a, what is essentially a new build uh, dwelling, but that would be read as part of a, a wider conversion um, conversion cool. scheme. Uh, if I could just come back on that, sorry, Chair. So there is planning permission in place for that building originally to be converted to a dwelling. Uh, now, so that leads on to my second question. How is the proposal, the retrospective proposal, now materially different from what was permitted? Are there any significant diff differences? Yeah, so I guess the resultant appearance would be largely similar to the uh, approved conversion scheme. The material difference is, is now it, it is a new build and planning policy at a national and local level is you know, it's, it's quite clear in, um, in that, you know, we, we allow conversions in the countryside. There are benefits of reusing buildings, but without that conversion, things don't stack up on a, on a, uh, on a, a planning policy basis. Um, you know, that's officer's interpretation of that and um, members are, I say, entitled to take their view and uh, taking the matters in, into account. Councillor Tinsley, have you anything? No, I'm fine, happy with that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Liz Brown. Thank you, Stephen, for that presentation. In a way, I must declare an interest because I have a daughter with learning difficulties, so I can empathise with what the Nichols are going through. Uh, one or two things I want to say, looking at the NPPF, uh, paragraph nine, planning policies play a, an active role in guiding development, but local circumstances should be taken into account. I can't see that the adverse impacts significantly outweigh the benefits in this case. And the plan is a starting point for decision making. The committee has to weigh up the evidence and decide. Exceptional circumstances are allowed for in Teesdale Save Policy H9. So I'm, as I'm very sympathetic to, and I empathise with the applicant's circumstances, I would like to move that the committee vote against the officer's recommendation and approve this application. Thank you, Councillor Brown. You have nothing or do you wish to add? Nope. Thank you. Uh, Councillor John Shuttleworth, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I was a bit disappointed to see in the report where it says it's in an unsustainable location because I've got a number where in, in my area where 
we've had uh, issues about people saying planners saying it's in uns unsustainable location. And as an example, there's actually a, a barn just off the A68, about a mile and a half out of Tau Law, in a very similar position to this. And that got approval from the North Planning team. So I, really, I think I'd be seconding this and going with the local member that this gets approved because I think it, it makes it com com comprises the whole thing together and it's keeping making everything equal across the county because you know, in various areas we see whether it's unsustainable. If it is sustainable because it's only five minutes down the road in England. So I would move, I'd, I'd second the proposal. Thank you, Councillor Shuttleworth. Councillor Ivan Jewell. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to ask Stephen um, a, a question. Um, th this whole thing is, is very delicate and a sensitive situation. And, and I can see from a, a planning perspective where there would be problems, uh, but I also have great sympathy for, for the applicant. What I'm finding it difficult to, to come to terms with is that there was planning permission for the development of a residential home or a conversion uh, to residential home. So that that suggests that it is sustainable to a certain extent. But in the refusal, um, one of the first reason for refusal, we say in that the proposed development by reason of isolation and uh, unsustainability uh, of, of location would result in most journeys uh, to and from the property being made by private vehicle. Would that not be the same if with a conversion? And so, how would it be different from a for a conversion than a new build? the 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 end result is the same. It 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 is a a dwelling, and so if a conversion, how can a conversion be sustainable and yet a new build not be? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jewell. Uh, Stephen. Yeah, I think, you know, if, if we had a conversion scheme in front of us, we wouldn't be saying it was sustainable locationally, but what we'd be saying is the benefits of reusing that building or securing the heritage asset would outweigh the sustainable uh, issues of the location of the development. And that's the kind of cornerstone of development plan and national planning policies. However, you know, at the end of the report, I've, I've, I've highlighted that there is conflict with local plan and, and development plan and national planning policies, but it is a balancing exercise. In our opinion, that doesn't uh, weigh up, but members are entitled to take their view and, and, and come to a rounded decision there. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I have Councillor Jim Atkinson, um, and I think that's my final speaker. Councillor Atkinson. Councillor Jim Atkinson. Hi, you yeah. lost? Can you hear me? Yes, we are now. Thank you. I don't know for some reason the microphone was going on and off there. I don't I don't know why. Yes, um listening to the debate and reading the notes and being at the last meeting where, where the gentleman came and he made some mistake from what we can understand. It, it seems like a very genuine application to me and we've already passed it off. Uh, there are no uh, real differences in what we've already passed off and approved. So my sympathy does lie with the um, the applicant. I can understand that the planners, we have rules and things like that, and and the Nichols have been outside of them a couple of times now. But it doesn't look like the you know the serial um, uh, planning avoiders. They're not people who who understand these things fully. And uh, one of the major problems that the planner is, is the materials that he use and but again the applicant is explained and he's he quite right as well what you can see now isn't what it'll be at the end of the day and it's like painting a picture quite often it looks nothing like what it ends up looking like you know so as I, as I say seeing as you pretty much put the planning into place already and I agreed to it then I couldn't see me not agree to this now uh, so I would be uh, voting against the planner's um, recommendation. OK, thank you. And now I have Councillor Joyce Maitland, who has raised her hand, which is confusing. Uh, Joyce, do, do you wish yes. to speak? 
I did chair. Uh, sorry, I did uh, type in that RDS, but it doesn't seem to have come up. So that's why I raised my hand. I must Thank be doing you. something wrong, but I'm sorry. What I wanted to ask him um, was um, when the applicant was talking, he said they were reusing the stone of the demolished building. Is that the case or will it be all new stone? Um, I can ask the applicant to tell us. Um, would you wish to clarify that, Mr Nichols? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, the uh, Councillor Maitland is exactly right. That is what we're doing. Uh, the, the old original stone is the same stone that's going back into that building. Absolutely. There's no imported stone on any of that site, I don't think. That, I think that was part of the uh, the planning criteria. And, and as I'm aware, nothing has been brought in yet. Thank you very much. I've just got one question myself um, for the planning officer. Stephen, um, Mr Nichols has indicated that should the committee be minded to grant planning application, um, he would then work with the conservation officer to make sure that um, the look and the brick, the stonework on the building was um, absolutely appropriate. Um, would we need to condition that if we were to um, uh, grant um, um, planning permission on that? What would be? Can you just clarify what would be the situation, there? or could we proceed on, on on just a promise from from Mr. Nichols on that? Yeah, I'd recommend that we'll, we'll have a condition that we agree um, that the development continues in accordance with a, an agreed sample panel for stone, which would likely reflect, you know, what what is used on the wider development. There may be some localised uh, remedial works, but um, yeah, we, we could a condition would suffice that I would recommend. Thank you. Just um, very briefly, Mr. Nichols, would you be happy with such a condition? Um, yeah, we would. We would accept that. Thank you very much. Claire Cuskin, the um, legal officer, um, could you come in and advise on this just to make sure that we're not doing anything uh, incorrectly here? Certainly. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm Claire Cuskin, the legal officer. Um, so it's been proposed by Councillor Brown to um, grant planning permission. That's been seconded by Councillor Shuttleworth. Is that correct? Yes. Councillor Brown, yep. Yeah. So the reasons that I had from Councillor Brown was that it was felt that the adverse impacts of the development weren't felt to significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits, which is, which is fine. What we'll also need to do is get um, authority to work out the conditions that we're going to apply to the planning permission. Can I suggest that that's done at officer level in conjunction with the chair and vice chair? Other than that, I'm happy to proceed to a vote, chair. Thank you very much. That would be very uh, handy. I have Councillor George Richardson raising his hand. George, does this mean that you wish to speak? Can you hear me this time? We can hear you, George. Sorry about that, Mr Chairman. I've been fighting with this machine and it's been winning. Uh, <clears throat> I would just endorse what other people have said. It's a little bit late in the day, you're ready to go to the vote, but this is in my ward along with Councillor Rowlandson and I have actually had a site visit just myself without uh, well, myself and my wife and, and I'm prepared to uh, go, for ref uh, go against refusal for acceptance of this site. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Councillor Liz Brown, um, speaking to the uh, legal officer, um, I'm going to ask you if you would be prepared to adjust your, um, uh, your proposal slightly, that you propose that we um, give planning uh, permission for this development, um, but that we um, leave um, conditions uh, to, that we delegate planning conditions to the planning officers in conjunction with the chair and vice chair. Would you prepare to slightly amend your um, proposal to that? I I would be delighted to, Chair. Councillor Shuttleworth, would you be prepared to um, continue with your uh, seconding of that proposal um, with the, uh, the slight changes? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. God bless you. Um, now, what will happen is that the legal officer will go through um, members of the committee one by one, asking you um, whether you agree with the proposal. Now, remember that the proposal is to allow Mr. Nichols to continue building his barn, well, his house. Thank you, Chair. And members, speak up if I do miss anybody. Um, 
Councillor Atkinson, are you in favour of granting permission or against it? Yes, I will be delighted to vote in favour of Councillor Brown's motion. Councillor Bell, are you for or against? Um, for the application to be agreed. Thank you. Councillor Blakey? For. Councillor Brown? For. Councillor Huntington? For. Absolutely. Councillor Jewell? For. Councillor Maitland? For. Councillor Quinn? For. <coughs> Councillor Richardson? For. Councillor Shuttleworth? For. Councillor Tinsley? For. Councillor Zay? For. Chair, unless you wish to vote, that's unanimous. Um, I'll add my vote to that, yes, um, I am for that as well. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Mr Nichols? Yes, yes. Um, you have got planning permission to continue. Um, you'll be contacted by planning officers to sort out the, the, the details of that. And um, uh, thank you very much indeed. We hope that you're very happy in your retirement. Well done. Thank you. Thank you all very much. You made, you made my wife very happy indeed. Sort of, um, I, I, in these situations, there's always a huge flood of relief and enjoy the moment. OK, members, we're now moving to um, item B on the agenda, DM 20.00826, full planning application um, for a timber cabin to host pony training events and to provide holiday accommodation at Lartington Lane, uh, Lartington. And if we can just go straight to the officer, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> this application seeks planning permission for the erection of a timber cabin to provide holiday accommodation and an agricultural style building to facilitate pony training events. Application site is edged in red, located to the west of Barnet Castle on Lartington Lane. Uh, you can just see to the northwest of this image, Lartington Hall and Historic Parkland. This is an aerial image of the site, again located in red, uh, edged in red. The site is located in a very open landscape leading up to Lartington Hall and Historic Parkland and is largely devoid of any development. The, dev the woodland to the south is designated as an ancient woodland. This is a Google image of the site, although slightly dated, you can see the site levels rise up towards the woodland before they fall. Central to the photograph photo is a timber field shelter and beyond to the right of the photograph, you can just about make out a steel Dutch bomb, which has since been demolished. It's proposing, proposed to widen the access to approximately 12 metres in the position of the access gate and include the provision of visibility displays. It's likely overall that approximately 20 metres of hedgerow would need to be removed or cut back to facilitate the access and the visibility displays. A view across the site, sorry, this is a view across the um, site looking um, at the approximate position of the barn. Um, an existing field shelter would remain, a gravel access road would be created approximately 4.5 metres in width, running along an internal, east, along the internal eastern boundary. This is a view looking down the site from the uh, existing and proposed access point. You can note the gra gradual uh, level increase up to approximately five metres from the road level. This shows the level fall to the ancient woodland. The chalet would be located approximately five metres from the edge of the woodland at its closest point. This is a view showing the roadside vegetation in winter and summer. Hedges in the proximity of the Lartington Historic Parkland are are generally maintained relatively low for landscape setting reasons. However, due to COVID restrictions and the summer months, they are significantly higher than, than normal. This is a drone photograph from the site. Unfortunately, there are restrictions in terms of flying in the proximity of the site, which is restricted, has resulted in restrictions on the location of photographs that could be taken. This, however, gives a general feel of the surrounding landscape looking towards Barnet Castle in this instance. Another view looking northwest from the site towards the parkland. And this is a view of the western portion of the site looking west. The site plan, you can see the uh, access point, gravel access road leading to the bar, bar, uh, barn and subsequent chalet. It's a 
plans of the chalet, approximately 15 metres by 6 metres in footprint. Plans of the barn, approximately 27 metres by 12 metres in footprint with timber cladding. So two letters of objection received, including objections from Lartington Parish Council. The council's landscape officer also objects to the development based on the adverse impact of, on the area of high landscape value and the wider parkland landscape. It's concluded that the development would result in a significant adverse visual impact on the surrounding distinctive landscape, an area of high landscape value, contrary to relevant development plan policies and the MPPF. It's also concluded that insufficient information has been submitted to assess the development's impact on the adjacent ancient woodland due to the proximity of the development and likely cut and fill requirements. It is recognised that there would be some positive benefits arising from the development associated with uh, increased visitor numbers and job creation. Those was considered these benefits would be relatively limited given the scale of the development. It is also recognised that the development would assist in understanding preservation of the Dales pony breed. Whilst officers do have sympathy with the applicant's aspirations, overall on balance it is considered that the proposal does not constitute sustainable development when assessed against the MPPF as a whole and there are no material considerations which outweigh the conflict with the development plan and therefore the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you very much. Um, have any members um, immediate questions they wish to ask of the officer? I'm getting shakings of heads. I've, I've got one. Um, Stephen, um, there, are, there are issues here with intrusion into, the, into an area of high landscape value and um, people will have seen my, my grimace when it was um, said that uh, the proposed chalet is only five metres from the woodland. How many discussions gone on between officers and the applicant about um, the way those um, uh, th those impacts might have been mitigated. What can, can you, so, and, and, and what uh, and if there were such discussions? What was said? What was the outcome of them? Yes. Yeah, so the, the site is in a high landscape value uh, area um, and in a sensitive landscape. But there's also a designation of an ancient woodland to the to the um, to the north of the site. Sorry, south of the site. Um, Planning guidance sets out that you should be 15 metres away from the boundary of an ancient woodland or at least have a, an adequate assessment of the likely impact of that. Now, throughout the, the course of the application, stemming from pre-application discussions, we have looked at alternatives to the, uh, the siting of, of the buildings that would potentially reduce the landscape impact and take them out of this, this buffer area. Unfortunately, offices in conjunction with the landscape office section um, both uh, landscape officers and the principal landscape officers feel that you know even the positioning, repositioning of the buildings in the site wouldn't outweigh the, wouldn't get round the landscape harm. There would potentially be a solution of moving the boundary, moving the the development outside of that 50 meter buffer, but that that still wouldn't remove the landscape harm, and therefore those those discussions haven't progressed. Thank you very much indeed for that answer. I have two local members wishing to speak. Um, is Councillor Ted Henderson here, please? I am Chair. Uh, uh, Councillor Henderson, um, we'd love to hear what you have to say, please. Right, uh, I've, I've, I've actually been to, uh, to the site and, and, and actually looked at the site from, from the gate and um, spoken to the, the applicants themselves and they were quite prepared to to drop the height of, of, of the buildings by about two feet, which would lessen the impact on the, uh, the views. Um, this is a couple that farm up in the, the upper dales, and as as we know, you know, the 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 uh, it, it it isn't an easy job now. So they are trying to di uh, diversify by coming down the dale on land which, which, which they have and putting in an attraction to bring the, the, the tourists in. Now this would be a financial gain to, uh, to Teesdale. It would also 
help them financially to continue to farm. The ponies themselves, I mean, you know, if, if, if you think about this, there's children in towns and such like that have never seen a horse. I think it's a, a head and a tail and four sticks in, in, in you know, around to the corners. It would be a great advantage to have the the um, the access for them alone, and the 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 the, the chalet is going to be wood clad clad, so it's going to fit in to the the surroundings. It's going to fit in exceedingly well. I think it would be a great loss to the to the deal if this was turned down. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Thank you for your uh, clarity and brevity. It was very clear. Um, Councillor Richard Bell, are you there? I'm here, yes, Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'll try and be clear, but I won't necessarily be promised to be as brief because I've got a lot of detailed points to go through on the application. Um, I think at the outset, it's really, um, this is an application where a site visit would really have been supremely beneficial. And I do think the committee's um, lost a lot through not being able to do that. So I hope you'll indulge me. I've submitted some photos, which hopefully um, Michael will be able to display when we get to the right points, um, because I've had two site visits um, during the course of the of, uh, of my uh, inquiries onto this. Um, given that the only sort of substantive objection is, is on landscape grounds, I think it's important to sort of say, say talk about the backstory. Um, there's a photo flash up there very briefly. The backstory is important. There used to be a very ugly Dutch barn um, in that field. I think Michael is going to put it up now. Um, and it was stone damaged and that was quite visible from the road. And uh, the applicant took that down because it was damaged and as you can see, potentially it could fly off and injure somebody. Um, and he's, he's played this application with a straight bat throughout. That's to say, if that had been left up, he could have put up an equally ugly structure in that position with minimal interference from planning officers by virtue of, of permitted development rights. Um, but he thought perhaps rather naively that if he took that down, he would be able to agree um, an erection of a replacement building in a less obtrusive location with superior materials. That's a reasonable assumption to make. That would appear to have been a tactical error because this application is now being treated as if it, as if it were a virgin site. Now, I know you might say, well, that's irrelevant. The fact that it's taken that building now, we have to take uh, consider it as a virgin site. But I, I think that backstory is important because it's important to recognise that the applicants have actually put an awful lot of work into this application and played it with a straight back throughout. But anyway, considering the, the, the situation as it is, if I can talk principally about the location then, and I would refer you to paragraphs 39 and 71 of the report, where it states that the, the, the site is within the wider parkland landscape of Lartington Hall Park, you've got to be careful with looking, looking at ordnance survey maps and pictures from drones, because I would say that statement is not correct. Even if all the hedges were removed at a stroke, um, the site is not visible from the Hall Park, nor is the Hall Park visible from the site. There's no visual link between the two. So I think it would possibly set, to me, set a dangerous precedent for this committee if you're starting to link um, two sites on the basis of, of drones and maps without actually what you can see on the ground. The second, I think, substantive issue for me is the degree of the screening by the hedge. And if I can ask uh, Michael to put up the second photograph, please. Um, so this is the summer hedge. Um, the fishing rod was meant to provide a bit of scale, but in the event I thought it wasn't really necessary because I'm six foot three anyway. So that's like a fairly average section of the of the hedge in uh, in the summer. As you can see, it's, it's above six foot and I'm standing on the verge, which again is a, is a few inches proud of the highway. Um, I accept it's probably less um, thorough um, a disguise in the winter, but it's not totally deciduous. We aren't talking um, beach here. And the applicant, um, I think, has offered in the past to do underplanting or whatever is necessary to, to look at that lower level. But I think the point is that at eye level from a car, you can never see through it summer or winter. And again, if you'd visited the site, you'd, you'd be confident that you can't see through that hedge in a car 
because I've done it. You can't see through that hedge in a four by four. Uh, I've got Nissan extra Nissan X Trail because I've done it. Um, the only way to actually see the field is by parking up in the gateway, or if you're on foot, parting away through the hedge or whatever. But you would, would you would not see it unless you really tried. Um, I haven't tried to see uh, being in the bus to see if you can see it from that. Again, if you'd done a site visit, you'd have seen that, but I would very much doubt it. Um, and as I said, the applicant would be very happy to infill any gaps. I think um, the third point I'd like to make, um, moving on from the, the, you know, the porosity of the hedge, if you can have the third photograph up, um, please. Um, that's a, a, a tractor with a loader that was parked. The applicant said it parked it in the position of where it's going to be and the height of the loader is the height of the eaves of what it is. Um, I didn't take my fishing rod to measure that, but clearly it is a it is a substantial tractor that's parked in the dell as the land uh, falls towards the rear of the field. Um, and you will just have to take my word for it that you could not see that from the gate from the road. You could not see that tractor or the forks. Uh, that only becomes visible as you actually go into the field. So again, I am confident that either the, 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 the holiday chalet would, would not be visible or only a very small portion of the roof of it would be visible from the road. Again, that is something that you would um, uh, miss from the road. Just coming back to the hedge um, briefly, I was going to say that the applicant disputes the amount of hedge that would be needed to widen the gateway. It stated at paragraph 77 that 60 metres of hedge would have to be removed. I was pleased to see that the officer in his verbal introduction said that was 20 metres, which sounds much more likely, but I think that's an important point to make 20 metres of hedge likely to be removed uh, rather than the 60 that's in the report. So that is an error in the report. I don't know whether that is a highways um, figure, calculated figure or an officer figure, um, a best estimate, but it's certainly I get not a significant amount of hedge would be removed. And again, the applicants have offered to replant that and do such screening as would be practicable, given that what we're talking about is visibility displays and um, road safety. While I'm on the subject of road safety, I noticed that it's an interesting objection somebody's put in that basically it's a, it's a straight road, therefore people can go fast and overtake. Um, the, the logical corollary of that is we should only allow road access when it's a blind bend and people are going slowly. So I think that's uh, somewhat spurious, but in terms of perhaps the more serious objection somebody made in terms of volume of traffic, the applicant has said that that would be limited to um, no more than 10 uh, vehicles at any given time in any case, which I would submit is not uh, given the nature of the event of events and residential use, a holiday use, it would not be a significant um, traffic load. So some of the of the, the, the big field shelter, the replacement balm, if you like, will certainly be visible from the road, but much less of it, I would submit, than was the previous um, Dutch barn. And it's certainly in much superior materials, that's to say it's uh, figure, uh, it's timber clad. And just a final word on screening. Um, the council did a few years ago allow a 100 pitch mixed touring and static caravan site just down the road in a very similar location um, behind a hedge on the slow stretch where drivers would be more likely to be uh, able to view it because they're going more slowly. Uh, that site also has a substantial service block and all that was deemed to be okay, but um, this isn't. And I believe that we would be um, on thin ice if this went to appeal for what would be, I think, um, a very, uh, would appear to be a very inconsistent um, approach. If I could just move on uh, now, Michael, please, just to finally talk about ancient woodland. Um, this is quite an interesting sort of um, thing. I, I know quite a bit about woodland, though not necessarily ancient, because my house um, is on the edge of a plantation from the uh, the First World War era, so I do know um, about building next to woodland. When is ancient woodland not ancient woodland? Well, I dare say the area and some of it down further down may be ancient, but, as, but I've examined those trees carefully. That's a photograph of the trees behind the proposed site. And they are self-seeded um, birch, essentially, which is what you get when uh, trees have been felled. And my understanding is that mature trees were felled in that um, some decades ago and taken out. Um, and this is self-seeded birch. It's clear, you can see you don't need to be a specialist arborealist to see that they are not ancient trees. If you compare them with the fence, the fence posts, which are three inches square, you'll see that the diameter of those trees is three to six inches. And by my estimation, 
would be 20 um, to 30 years old. So um, it is not ancient woodland in a commonsensical interpretation of that. That is not ancient, ancient woodland in anybody's money. Um, I would have liked, like you, Chair, to have seen some sort of indication as to what the potential damage that woodland would be um, from the foundations of the, um, the actual holiday chalet. Um, again, I could go, go back to the um, static um, caravan site just down the road. They have pitches far closer to the woodland than what is proposed here. And I'm presuming that they were allowed because the foundations required to pitch a static caravan, just as the foundations required to uh, put on a wooden um, shed, uh, are not particularly deep. We aren't talking about building a Manhattan skyscraper here, we're talking about a timber cabin. And from my experience, those founds would typically be about 12 inches deep, uh, which would have no effect whatsoever. I would hope that that could be um, regulated by um, condition, really. I, I, I do not see that as uh, as a reason to um, to, to reject. Um, essentially, given that the only serious objection is from our landscape department, I would hope that I've shown um, you that really, if on a ground level view, be it from foot or be it from motor car on the road, there is no significant landscape uh, impact. You can argue that any development anywhere has an adverse landscape in impact. Every time we put up a house or a housing estate, it has an adverse landscape impact. The question here is, is it significant? Now, certainly, if you compare what is proposed with what was up there before, that ugly old Dutch barn, I would say what is proposed is an improvement. If you rule that the Dutch barn pre-existence is out of order because that's already been demolished. As I said, the applicant rather unwisely and naively demolished that barn before submitting this plan. If you rule that that's out of order, you can't take the Dutch barn into consideration. It still begs the question, is this a significant adverse landscape impact? Um, and I would say that well, it's not, because essentially, if you can't see it unless you're in a light aircraft or a drone or a hot air balloon, um, how can it be sig significant? Um, the screening, I think, um, is adequate and in any case you can underplant hedges and or, or augment that the ancient woodland is not ancient and in any case as i as i think the foundations for a timber lodge uh, are not significant and will not adversely affect that i think both of those concerns could be regulated um, by condition and by negotiation but there is no actual valid planning reason to my mind to reject this application and on that basis I would support it and I'm sure much to your relief chair I'll conclude what I've got to say at that point thank you thank you very much that was very clear and very helpful councillor Bell thank you for your contribution um I have uh councillor Ivan Jewell who indicated that he he wishes to speak uh, councillor Jewell yes thank you chair and can I say thank you to uh, our planner for his presentation yeah, can um, I interrupt you councillor Jewell this is not yet um the uh, moment for councillors to, to contribute and comment. Um, the, I, I'm assuming I, that I, you have a question to the one of the presenters. I was having a question to the planner in terms of... Spot on. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much. Councillor Jew? We've yes. lost you. Uh, so the, thank you, Councillor Jill. I was just um, confirming that you were just you're going to ask a question to the um, one of the presenters, and 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 now um, uh, sort of I would love to hear what that question is. Please continue. Thank you for allowing me to interrupt you. Thanks. Thanks very much for that, Chair. Um, what I'd like is clarification. I notice in the recommendation too. Um, it says, in the opinion of the local planning authority, insufficient information has been submitted to assess the development. I find that rather strange. What, what was the applicant not asked for for further information, or were they asked and and just didn't give the further information? Thank you. Steve. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I think unfortunately we're working to very tight timescales to to hit the committee. I think um, the applicants, which you may allude to later on, has a as a grant pending on this application. So there, there's limited time frames to go back and query um, elements of, of, of the of the scheme or whether that would, you know, whether those matters could be addressed. 
obviously we are in that 50 meter buffer where there should be some sort of assessment on terms of the impact on the the ancient uh, woodland appreciate the trees on the on the fringes of that look less mature but you know there is an element of cut and fill and you know due process should be should go through on that and i'll turn in addition to that we, we have looked at sort of the alternative positions on site and because we felt that there wasn't a position that would address the landscape harm in the balance and um, that that matter hasn't been progressed and due to the committee time scales yeah that has been the opportunity to, to consider that further would it be possible to put a condition that further information was um given um i think you, could, <laughs> you, you potentially could put a condition or you, you could I think further work could be done to inform whether there needed to be a revised position, and that could be, you know, the, the final decision of that delegated to the uh, to officers and, and chair, uh, chair and vice chair to to address that matter potentially. Thank you. Um, I have um, just a comment to make about um, ancient woodland. Um, as always, Steve, please stop me. Uh, just for Councillor Bell. Um, it's not the trees that make it ancient woodland, it's the, the soil and the location. Um, sort of so, um, whatever the trees look like, um, uh, we, we have very few areas that we should designate it ancient woodland, and it's all to do with how long there has been woodland on that period, uh, on, that, on that position. Um, the next person I have to speak, um, and uh, we, we have no objectors at all, uh, committee members. Um, the next person is a supporter. Um, Alison Eccles, are you here? Hello? Hello, Alison. It's um, my video stopped working. Um, I, I seem to be appealing to the heavens for help. I'll fiddle on with it while I listen to you. Um, uh, sort of, Alison, um, you've got five minutes please don't be um taken aback when somebody shouts after you at you after four and um we're very interested please uh, tell us um what you have to say thank you uh, thank you chairman and members for the opportunity to speak could i please just say before i read my statement that some of the information given by stephen at the beginning was incorrect some of the measurements i mentioned the building being uh, 50 meters and it's actually 50 foot and the gateway being 20 metres and it's actually 20 foot and also the field shelter he said would remain the existing field shelter that we have offered to demolish that field shelter as well to aid the visual impact so I just would like to point that out thank you my name is Alice Neckles myself and my husband David are tenant farmers in Upper Teesdale David has been breeding Dale's ponies since he was 14 years old, having been reared under the wing of some excellent stocksmen and Dalesmen from a bygone era. He has dedicated his life to breeding these ponies, who are one of our native pony breeds, and acquired a massive knowledge over the years, which we wish to pass on to the next generation. Due to the effects of Brexit and the future of farming, um, we are looking to, for another income stream and looking to diversify. We are, of course, bitterly disappointed with the recommendation to refuse our application. We've made every effort to avoid this situation and to arrive at a scheme which satisfies officers and various committees. We're in the process of applying for a rural grant via the Rural Development Agency. Um, there are two proposed reasons for refusal, landscape impact and impact on the trees. We would have liked the opportunity to address the impact on trees. I note caravans and an amenity building have been permitted within very close proximity to the same woodland at the adjacent Barnard Castle caravan site. We would also like to point out, uh, which would be evident if you visited the site, um, the point that Richard made about um, the beech trees being removed around 25 years ago. Um, therefore the resulting woodland is now simply self-seeded scrubland with relatively new trees. The recommendation of officers is that our development will have a significant adverse impact on the landscape. This is based at least in part on the landscape officer's advice. Your officer's report acknowledges that the lodge is largely hidden by landform. The crest of the surrounding landscape would actually entirely screen it from public view. It also follows, therefore, that any domestic paraphernalia, 
if there is any connected with the holiday lodge, would not be seen either, particularly as um, together with any parked cars and hard standing would be close to the ground. We have stated in our documentation that any demonstrations carried out would be limited to 10 people per session, therefore two or three vehicles at any given time will be coming onto site. Our proposed building will be visible, however it is essential we have this. We felt it would be better than the tin field shelter in the middle of the adjacent field, which we have only just demolished, now with huge regret. The officer's report suggests that our decision to do this in anticipation of planning approval for a replacement in a more discreet location has simply made the landscape better and more difficult to obtain planning permission for a new building. We feel our development is an improvement and that we are being penalised for having tried to do the right thing. Any external storage and clutter referred to in the officer's report is unnecessary and if needed could be controlled and prevented by way of a planning condition and use of the building. The landscape impact referred to by your landscape officer is mainly the visibility of the proposed shed from Lartington Lane. If members are familiar with this part of the county, it is a 60 mile an hour road with no footpaths and quite dense hedgerows and trees along most of its boundary. If anything, only limited views of the proposed building would exist. I can think of far more prominent approved farm buildings in the area of outstanding natural beauty, clearly visible along much of the length of the A66, with no screening or visual mitigation whatsoever. We dispute the extent of hedgerow to be removed to obtain visibility due to the depth of the highway verge, but in any extent it must only be reduced to one metre. One minute remaining. Not remo removed entirely and could be conditioned. We, we replant behind the visibility splay. We have proposed new hedgerows and can supplement the hedgerow to the western boundary of this field, which would render the building almost invisible. This area and landscape is characterised by small fields with hedgerow boundaries, sporadic trees and small groups of planting. A new hedgerow would be barely discernible and would be an added benefit to wildlife, also compensating for any losses to achieve visibility. We hope that you will acknowledge that despite objections regarding traffic, that the highway impact of our development is acceptable, along with the ecological impact. We believe that our development will be of great benefit to the county and locally bringing some to new meat to Teesdale. Its impacts can be controlled by planning conditions to make sure that hedgerows are planted to further mitigate what limited impact there will be and to control outdoor storage. Sincerely hope you all agree and approve our application today. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. May I thank all the speakers for the way they've um, kept the time so uh, excellently. Thank you for that very clear um, uh, and, and uh, polite um, presentation, uh, Alison. That was most appreciated. Um, before we move to members, Stephen, have you anything you want to say about that? Yes, thank you, Chair. I've, I've just double checked those dimensions um, and the figures I quoted were slightly rounded up in the report just for the ease of the presentation. Um, but um, bear me just two seconds. The so paragraphs um, five and six in the committee report set out the dimensions of the building. Um, I've double checked they are accurate and would, would generally reported in that uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the presentation there. Um, yeah, I mean, in relation to that existing barn, yeah, that, that has been demolished. Um, what I would point out that was an open structure. I think it had an established impact on the landscape and the, the proposal is significantly different there. Um, views were achievable through the barn, barn and, you know, you know, we've taken advice from the landscape officer that the landscape section as a whole, that this would have a, an adverse visual impact and weighing up the, the, mer the merits of the case, we feel like in this instance, the the benefits of the development wouldn't outweigh that that landscape impact. Thank you. Um, I have before we move to officers um, uh, to members comments. I have um, uh, just one more thing to say. Um, a number of the presentations have made references to situations 
on other sites and um, elsewhere, the caravans and other buildings um, which were allowed. Can I just remind members that um, we are assessing um, this uh, this site um, according to planning um, the planning rules uh, and um, sort of uh, what's happened elsewhere is not really relevant. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, I have a number of people already. Councillor Atkinson. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me, Councillor Atkinson? Yes, can. Yes, uh, again, I find myself coming down in favour of the applicant again. Um, and my main reason is uh, in terms of the, you know, I'm on a um, economy and enterprise committee and we're always looking for um, any ways that we can improve the economy. So this particular business that Mr Eccles wants to start, so in terms of math, seems to me to be an expensive uh, uh, business. Yeah, he's, he's certainly going to put a lot of money into the economy here. I mean, if you look at looking after ponies and training ponies, I mean, you only have to think about training a, a, a dog to look after a blind person. You know, it, it goes from a thousand pound dog to probably a fifteen thousand pound dog. So they, they, these are all relevant factors in, 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 in terms of what he's going to do on this this particular site. He's looking at spending an awful lot of money here and uh, you can't get around it. The, the infrastructure itself, the log cabin, the training of human beings, the place to put them in. It, it can only be good for the economy and anything that interests um, people from a tourism point of view. This is something else we're all, all, always trying to excite ourselves about and get moving forward on, getting people in, in, to, to, to come and look. And again, it's all a very valuable commodity, all of this stuff, and it isn't cheap. So there's got to be quite a lot of money spent here. I mean, you only have to look at vet bills as well. And then we come to the, the main objection, which has already been pointed out, which is the, the effect on the, um, the adverse effects it'll have on the landscape. And uh, again, I, I have a little bit of a problem with this. Uh, I, I do a little bit of artwork myself in, in my own free time and I quite often paint landscape. And then what I tend to do is I tend to copy it a lot. And when you copy it, you find yourself looking back at it and you're not copying what's actually there because you take your eyes off it. You know, you don't see. So how somebody can sort of look into the into the future and say something and paint a picture and says it'll demonstrably affect the landscape. You've got 360 degrees around any, any point in time and the landscape will look different every time. I always have a difficulty with that. So I don't I don't really think we're making the case here without a crystal ball to make that the visual impact case. So in terms of the economy, there hasn't been a great deal of objections from people either. It, 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 it seems to me that the, the biggest loser will be the, um, the, the guy himself. The applicant himself has the most to lose. He's already told us in his in his, um, uh, in his application that he's got a greater interest in the landscape around him than anybody has. He's going to put a lot of money into it. He's already taken care of the landscape. We're the only people look, look at, looking at the landscape. He's taken care of it. He's a guy who gets out there and, and does the job. And again, he knows how expensive this all is. And it's, it's certainly in his interest to keep it... Uh, to keep it right because he's going to expect visitors to come and things like that. So I can't think to myself he's looked at this uh, from a technical point of view, study the amount of money he's going to have to spend here and then work out for himself, oh God, I'll just do this anyway, even if I do make the landscape look rubbish. He just couldn't do that. So so with these things in mind, I, find it, I found it difficult to sort of accept the refusal that is being given, I would be much more inclined to uh, to go against the officer's recommendation in this particular instance. I'll, you know, I'll listen to what everybody else has to say, but if, uh, you. if it doesn't Thanks change, I would be proposing we went against it. Can you hear me? Thank you. Councillor Fraser, Tinsley, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I would have a lot of sympathy here with um, with the position the applicant finds themselves in. I understand their background farming in Teesdale. I understand their background with ponies. And I also 
very cognizant of the issues around Brexit, which are really going to affect our hill, hill and communities. But we're determining an application for forestry and we have to consider more issues than just that. We have to consider all material planning issues. Really central to that is the designations that we have here. Uh, we designate areas of land for a reason. We do that to protect them uh, or to manage them correctly. We have an area of high landscape value, which this is located in, and we have an ancient woodland adjacent to the site. Regardless of what we feel about the quality of that, it's designated so they want protection in that grounds. So moving on from that, we have a development which has a number of parts of it. And I just want to run through those. We have an access way, which is materially different to the access uh, that is there now. It is going to involve a removal of, I think, 20 metres of hedge. Uh, it will change the character of the road at that location. We also have two buildings, and I want to focus really on the main shed building. We have a shed there which is 6.5 metres at the ridge height. Now, that is a significant structure. Um, I know the applicants offered to reduce that by 60 centimetres, but that's not a material change in my view. It wouldn't be noticeable from any, any distance away. So we have got a building there that is significant and I think is of a scale that would have an impact upon that landscape. Now, I know Councillor Bell has identified the fact that there is a Dutch barn or there was a Dutch barn on, on the site. Uh, looking at that, it would appear to be significantly smaller than the building that's proposed. The building that's proposed, the shed that's proposed, uh, is over 300 square metres uh, in scale. The Dutch barn, by my estimation, would be maybe 100 square metres, so it is very significantly bigger than that Dutch barn, which is no longer there. Uh, obviously, we must remember that. Uh, other issues is we're proposing a significant roadway across the field, uh, which will be visible from a, a further distance away. Um, and we have to bear in mind that there is a level change on the site. That roadway is 4.5 metres in width. Uh, so that is a, a significant change in, remember, what is a, an area of high landscape volume. So taking those points together, I am inclined to agree with the planning officer that the impact upon the, the area, uh, the high landscape value area of high landscape value will be significant. And also the proximity to the ancient woodland is a problem for me. Uh, I've listened to Councillor Atkinson's comments and uh, I understand that we do need to focus on uh, the economy in our rural areas in, in, in County Durham. Um, but uh, I think really this is probably a, a good development in the wrong location uh, for the reasons to do with the sensitivity of the landscape. So I am inclined to agree with the with Lartington Parish Council who object to the proposal, our landscape officer who objects to the proposal, and our plan planning officer who has recommended refusal. So I would move that we uh, refuse permission in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Tinsley. Um, I note that you have moved that we accept the officer's um, recommendation. Um, I have <coughs> Councillor Zare. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I agree with Councillor Atkinson and um, what he uh, quoted on um, on the tourism side. You just have to look at paragraph 42 um, from Visit County Durham. You know, rural tourism is worth £167 million pounds here. Um, and it's most, you know, no matter what sector you're in now, with this pandemic that, we, that we're going through at the moment. Um, it's vastly important, vastly important that we get everything to get back onto track. And I think the applicant has, has been very, very brave to invest in, um, in, in, in this application um, on, on the tourism side. And I think as councillors, I think, I think we should be applauding them. Um, and hopefully that um, we can all agree that we're in a position now as a country as a whole that we need to get back on track, get every sector working again, get the economy working again. And this is one step forward, especially for the rural area. Um, so I'll be voting against the officer's recommendation on that alone. Thank you, Councillor Zare. That was very clear. Councillor John Shuttleworth. Thank you, Chairman. 
I always keep saying, I'm going to continue saying, we have to take note of the local members because they have the local knowledge, be it in Teesdale or at concert or, or wherever. But, you know, we're living in queer times here and anything that's going to create any employment or any tourism or any of the pe people to bring money into the economy, we have to support it. And Jim Atkinson's right. And the fact he's proposed it, I'm going to second that we go against the officer's recommendation and approve this because it's beneficial to people in Teesdale. It's beneficial to people in all of County Durham. Excuse me, Councillor Shuttleworth, I'm just going to clarify. I do not think that uh, Councillor Atkinson went as far as approving it. Can I just check that before no. um, we it's take you seconding? It might not exist. Councillor Atkinson, had you actually proposed that we approve the building, that we say that they're allowed to um, build this build these buildings? Yes, I can clear that up now. Yeah, that's a proposal from me. Yes. To... Right, thank you very much. Um, I have um, a proposal for a council, and this means Councillor Shuttleworth that your seconding is now valid. Thank you very much. Uh, forgive you. me, everybody, for just clearing it up. Um, I have um, Councillor Ivan Jewell um, wishing to speak. Councillor Jewell. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about this. I mean, I think this is a very sens sensitive issue and it's, it's, it's proved more sensitive than I thought it, it was going to be after reading the papers. However, what concerns me is that we're deciding on a planning application and we're doing that on planning legislation. What seems to be happening here is we're having people coming in with um, reasons outside of planning legislation. It's about sort of generating business. Um, it, 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 it's about the economy and, and, we, and we, we can't make um, decisions on planning applications on those things really. Yes, they do have they do have an effect on it, but by and large, I think we might be struggling to come up with a valid reason for objecting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to bring in um, Claire Cuskin at this point because um, what I would uh, um, understand, Claire, is that uh, we're looking at this under paragraph 11, which is the weighted balance, um, that um, we um, are, are, go, are sort of required by that to give um, planning uh, approval unless the negative effects substanti uh, substantially outweigh the benefits. And I would have thought that um, the benefit to the local economy would have been a valid planning uh, uh, consideration. Um, so um, I, I understand what Councillor Jewell is saying, but can you just clarify that this, um, because this is quite important yeah. to the argument, I think, that this committee would be um, uh, correct in uh, um, taking the benefit to the local economy as a material planning benefit, which they could then use in this weighing of, um, uh, 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 of benefits against disadvantages. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, so the, the first point to note is that we are not in the actual tilted balance in this application. We think there are um, planning policies which are up to date and are applicable. So it's just the ordinary kind of weighing up the application, none of the, the adverse impacts demonstrably so typically outweigh the benefits. But certainly, um, economic impacts can certainly be a material planning consideration. Thank One thing I have to say that I am concerned about though, Chair, if you, you, you'd indulge me for a second, I'm quite nervous about granting planning permission without knowledge of how the application would impact upon the ancient woodlands. Yeah. And I, I'm not certain to what extent that that could be adequately mitigated by condition because what, what would happen if we were in the situation where the impacts on the ancient woodland were found to be unacceptable? We, we would have granted plan permission in those circumstances and it wouldn't be capable of being implemented. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification and an important one. Um, Councillor George Richardson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, sorry I didn't dare to yes, but if I did that I'd probably lose you. Uh, this is in a neighbouring ward to myself. I know it quite well. I don't think I can really add a lot to what's been said, but it would greatly help with visitor numbers and uh, obviously that would be a financial gain to the deal. The, the officer mentioned the Dutch barn and you could see through it. Well, I clearly remember a time when riding past when 
probably for eight months of the year that was filled with hay and you can't see through hay. And on my agenda plan, there is rear gill just beyond the site. And I do know through past history that there was, or maybe even still is, a riding school training facility there. And as Richard Bell said, we did give planning permission for a caravan site, and it's a large caravan site a few years ago already. So I would be in favour of granting this application because of what it could bring to the area and to the Taysdale area as a whole. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Um, I appear to have frozen again, um, but uh, I'm hoping people can hear me. C uh, Councillor Jewell, can you wave at me if you can hear what I'm saying? God bless you. Thank you very much. Um, I have nobody else wishing to speak. Um, I am aware um, that um, there are a number of um, members who are arguing that we ought to accept this. Um, I'm scared. Um, especially in view of what um, Claire Kuskin said, that we may just give planning application, um, sort of uh, planning approval. Um, so uh, Claire, stop me um, if I'm doing anything wrong at any point here. Um, I want to go back to Councillor Atkinson. Um, would you be prepared to um, adjust your proposal uh, so that it was like the previous application that should um, you win that that would then be passed to the officers with the chair and vice chair um, to negotiate um, planning conditions with the um, applicant. Would you be prepared to change your um, uh, hang on before I before we go any further Claire can you come and help on this one thank you. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I think that's the point I'm making. If we were to even do that, the NPPF states that permission should be refused if there's a loss to, of or deterioration to an ancient woodland, unless there are wholly exceptional circumstances. At this point, we just don't know what those impacts are likely to be because we haven't had any assessment of that. So I, I don't see how we could actually impose a, a pre-commencement condition requiring that to be when we don't know what the answer is. Um, so we can have so a little I, discussion in front of everybody, Claire. What I'm worried about is, is that if we don't um, at least put something like that, then what will happen is that sort of the, the, the committee may just grant approval and there'll be, there'll be no conditions or restraints at all. Well, we, we would have to have conditions imposed anyway. Um, but what, what I could suggest is that members actually delegate the whole decision to area team leaders so it would be minded to approve um, resolution subject to the impacts on the ancient woodland being resolved to the satisfaction and the final decision being taken at, at officer level in conjunction with perhaps the chair and vice chair. That would give greater flexibility so you could potentially look to move the location of the the chalet that, that, that would be permitted under delegated powers or you could potentially look to impose a condition. So that, that would be my advice as to how to take it forward but obviously the final decision is absolutely down to members in terms of their planning judgment. Right. At this point, I need to go to the members um, because we need to know uh, sort of what their will is. This is the de this is gentlemen and ladies. This is a committee decision. We we make we make the decision on this. Um, so what I'm going to first do is um, I'm going to go to Councillor Atkinson. The I am just. This, uh, I do not wish to influence you, Councillor Atkinson, but the officer is suggesting there that um, instead of just saying um, that we want to approve this, we might, the committee might say um, that it is minded to approve um, and uh, then um, throw the thing back to negotiation between the um, officers uh, and the um, chair and vice chair and the applicant. Now that's what's being suggested by um, uh, the legal officer. Um, you do not have to change um, if you do not wish to, but I'm sort of saying, um, would you be minded to change your proposal to that as suggested by the legal officer? Yes, Chair. Um, I think about that, but the grounds I was um, alluding to was that the officers hadn't, hadn't actually uh demonstrated 
the the adverse effects uh, outweigh the benefits and economic grounds are a perfectly acceptable uh, reason for not uh, accepting the officer's decision and I, I don't think we, we know enough um, to say that uh, we should take uh, it should outweigh the benefits anyway. Um, God bless you Jim, thank you very much. Um, Claire? Thank you Chair. Yeah, the point I'm trying to make, I'm sorry if I'm not being clear, is that we don't know what the adverse impacts are in terms of the impacts on the ancient, ancient woodland. So we're not able to take that into account really in the, the planning balance when we're assessing the application because we don't actually know what the impacts are. Thank you. Chair, Thank you, can, I ask if that, can I ask if that's guesswork again? No, that's just uh, that's just a, a clear fact of reasoning, Councillor Atkinson. That, that, that sort of we don't know what those um, adverse ad impacts are. However, um, I'm in danger here of um, uh, over influencing the the committee. Um, so we check. have. Um, Can I just come in? I've RTS a couple of times there. Sorry, uh, and I've got Liz Brown as well, wishes to speak. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Tins. I'll take you first. You've got mute, Councillor Tinsley. So, so just on the station woodland issue, so uh, the two issues, so we pro it appears that the, the proposal that's been moved and seconded is to approve permission, but we have no understanding of the impact upon that ancient woodland because I understand that no assessment of that has been made in the application and that in itself is contrary uh, to the MPPDF. That's the first thing. I just uh, The second thing was uh, this minded to approve situation. So I'm just concerned here. If we were to pass a, a resolution where we minded to approve permission, but then an assessment of the woodland was undertaken, the impact was found to be significant, then what would happen? Would it be a case that the officer could override the decision of the committee and refuse permission? Or would it be a case that the officer's hands would be tied in that whatever the impact, whatever the assessment of the impact on the woodland, they would have to uh, grant permission but try to mitigate that through means of condition. I'd just like clarity on that if possible. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. No, I mean, I, I don't think we would be looking to grant permission on unacceptable impacts. What what we could do is, if the impacts are found to be unacceptable, bring it back to committee for a further determination. At least then the impacts would be known and then committee would be able to take into account it in, in exercising their planning judgment and arrive at whatever decision they thought fit. My concern is with that we just don't know what the impacts are. Thank you. Yeah, with that in mind, Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm very, very worried about this one. We've got the area of high landscape value, we've got the ancient woodland, and we've got Lartington Park, which is down to be protected. Would it be possible to defer this? I know there's all this toing and froing. I understand that there's some sort of time limit on the grant that the Eccles are applying for, would we be able to bring it in within that time limit? As I understand it, the answer to that is no. Um, Councillor Jewell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I, I think really we should be deferring the decision on this one until we get um, some information on the impact I don't really think we can make a decision without having that information. And therefore, I would suggest that we defer decision on this um, until we have more information on the effect. Thank you. Right. Um, can, can, that is, is that a fair proposal, Councillor Jewell? Yes, I propose that we defer decision on this one until we get further information on the um, uh, uh, impact on the ancient woodland. Councillor, I'll second that, Chair. I take it that you would be there for seconding that? I would indeed, Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you, Committee, for your indulgence. Um, we are, I hope it's visible because we are being um, sort of um, recorded for posterity. I hope it's clear how hard this committee has worked and discussed to come to a proper and correct decision, um, which is a, a, a fair and uh, fits in with planning um, legislation. I have got um, three proposals. Um, one is from Councillor Tinsley 
who proposes that we reject the application in line with the officer's proposals. We do not have a seconder yet for that. I have a proposal from Councillor Atkinson, seconded by Councillor Shuttleworth, um, that um, we should um, accept the planning application, that we should agree it contrary to the officer's recommendation. And I have a proposal um, by Councillor Jewell, uh, seconded by Councillor Brown, that we should defer. Um, sort of, Claire, for goodness sake, shuts me up. I do not want to make a mistake on this, but I would intend to take the, the latter proposal first to defer. Um, I would say, okay. logically, we can't take uh, a, a decision yay or nay and then later decide whether we want to defer or not. Um, so I'm going to now ask um, if, the, if the motion to defer fails, then what I will do is I will take Councillor Atkinson's proposal to accept because that is the only one with a proposal and a seconder. So um, first of all, um, what's going to happen now, I understand that Claire will ask you um, whether you wish to defer. The answer is just yes or no on this. Yes, I want to defer. No, I do not want to defer. Claire, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Atkinson? Yeah, no, I don't want to defer uh, on the grounds that I'm going on the information in front of me at the moment. Understood. Councillor Bell? Yes, defer. Councillor Blakey? No. Councillor Brown? Yes. Councillor Huntington? Councillor Huntington? <coughs> Councillor Huntingdon, are you there, please? Eunice? We'll continue, uh, we'll turn at the end of the vote to see what Councillor Huntingdon wishes to do. Councillor Jewell? Defer, yes. Yes. Councillor Maitland? Defer. Councillor Quinn? Defer. Councillor Richardson? No. Councillor Shuttleworth? No. Councillor Tinsley? Defer. Councillor Zay? No. So that is, Councillor Eunice Huntington, are you available? Are you on mute? Yeah, yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Do you wish yes. to defer or not? Uh, you can defer. defer. Chair, do you wish to vote? Um, I, I, I would vote. Uh, it's not necessary for me to vote, though I would okay. have voted to defer. 7-5, I, I make that in favour of deferral. Um, this has been a tremendously difficult decision. Um, obviously, there is a, a need for speed here. Um, so I'll be uh, trying to um, uh, discuss with the officers whether we can get um, this sorted as quickly as possible. Um, but the, the decision is that we should defer um, this. And on, on that basis, I now am going to bring this discussion to an end. Thank you very much indeed. Finally, um, we move to um, agenda item C, application reference DM 1902733, outline permission uh, for land to the rear of Outwood Terrace Spennymoor um, for 39 dwellings. Um, can we hear the case officer on this, please? Thank you, Chair. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, Mark O'Sullivan, Senior Planning Officer. Bear with me two seconds. OK, can everybody see that? Can everybody see? Yes, yes can. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. OK, so the third item um, seeks outline consent, all matters reserved except access the erection of up to 39 dwellings on land to the rear of Atwood Terrace and Spennymoor. Members are reminded that this is an outline application. 
where only the means of access and the principle of development are to be considered. So here's the application site edged in red, um, land to the rear of Atwood Terrace. So we've got open countryside extending to the north and the west. The site backs on to Atwood Terrace to the east with further residential property to the south. Um, several hundred metres to the west, we have the Tudor Village Conservation Area. And just to the northeast there, we have the Tudor Industrial Estate. Here is the, um, the aerial view of the site. Um, showing the predominantly rural character and background nature of the development site. Again, you can see the Tudor Village Conservation Area extending to the west there and the industrial estate to the east. Um, you'll see a limb of the red line boundary there. So that is where the proposed access is meant to be going. And as I'll talk about in a minute, that's where there are some existing buildings which are to come down. So some photographs of the site on the outward terrace there looking north, we have um, a disused retail unit and a commercial unit, a red brick commercial unit there. They are the buildings that will be coming down to facilitate the proposed access straight onto that road there with residential properties to the north and the south. And again, the same location, but looking south with the commercial unit and the retail unit there as well to come down. This is looking from the, the rear of Atwood Terrace there with the commercial unit just in the foreground. The white building there is a residential property which would form the edge of the existing terrace with the access coming through that and the application site is behind me. Looking south there into the fields where the developments to go ahead, you'll see um, some development going on there. Members may recall that last year we approved application for three houses in that field there. So works are underway on that one and this is the site next to it. Looking west straight across the application site there, um, again, rural character and looking north there up the fields with that with Terrace on the right hand side of the picture. This is an indicative site plan. So again, we're only assessing means of access to the site here, but it shows how the 39 units could be laid out on the site with an area of open space, a suds drainage area to the north there, access straight onto Atwood Terrace to the east through the demolition of the existing buildings. In terms of consultation responses, Spennymore Town Council have objected to the application. I think they'll be making representation today. We've had objections from the Highway Authority of Drainage and Design and Conservation. No objections from the Coal Authority, Northumbria Water, Landscape, Spatial Policy, Ecology, Archaeology and Environmental Health all subject to condition though if it was to be approved and there are some planning obligations suggested. The application has been publicised by site notice, press advertisement and neighbour notification letters and including a further reconsultation exercise which was carried out when amended plans were received. In total we've received 77 letters of objection and two petitions of objection totalling 231 signatories all opposed to the development. We've had objections from both local members for the area, which is Councillor Grayson and Gardner. All representations are summarised in detail and addressed within the Officers Committee report. In summary, it's concluded that the development would harm, and would harm the distinct character and urban form of the Tudor Colliery Settlement. It would result in an encroachment into the countryside and further coalescence with Tudor Village, contrary to the identified policies. Whilst the proposals could achieve a satisfactory means of access, displacement of residents car parking to achieve the necessary visibility displays and the formation of the new access would adversely impact on the amenities of those residents on Atwood Terrace and highway safety, contrary to the identified policies. Insufficient information has been provided by the applicant to demonstrate that a satisfactory SUD system can be integrated into the site, contrary to part 14 of the MPPF. So overall, it's considered that the proposal does not constitute sustainable development when assessed against paragraph 11 of the MPPF. There are no material considerations which would outweigh the conflict of the development plan, and therefore the application is recommended for refusal. And I'll just add that the proposals have generated significant public and elected representative opposition, which have all been taken into account within the case officer's report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Do any members uh, wish to ask any questions of the presentation? 
Um, uh, may I apologise to members because my meeting chat is definitely sticky. Um, it's all to do with um, your connection, but I'm not getting anybody, any members who have said that they want to ask questions. And therefore, going to um, approach our speakers. And the first speaker is um, um, Parish Town Councillor uh, Neil Foster. Are you there, Neil? Uh, hopefully, you can hear me, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Um, delighted to hear your voice again, Councillor Foster. Could you tell us what you have to say? Thank you. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Spanningwood Town Council uh, and I'm the former county council for the area so I'm familiar with the site for more than 20 years and also its planning history and I appreciate each application must be considered on its own merits but this is the latest application in a series of applications for the development in this area I understand that twice planning permission has been turned down by both uh, the, the borough council and the county council in the past and subsequent appeals have been dismissed and in 1991, an independent inspector turned down a development in this area. There are feeling, feelings locally that by granting permission for the development behind the Black Horse and the permission to demolish uh, to the Victory Club and build bungalows there, have added to residents' concerns about all the development in the area. This application, if it was to go ahead, would only appear to confirm those fears. Indeed, having just recently seen the map, you'll see the proposed design of the site would appear to create several opportunities for this development to be expanded into the neighbouring fields. Given the, uh, the level of recent developments and existing permissions that have yet to be developed in the parish of Spennymower, of which Tudor is a part, I do wonder why this largely greenfield site has been brought forward yet again when it hasn't been recognised as a strategic development site uh, by the county. The space between uh, Tudor Village, including its conservation area, and Tudor Colliery. Uh, being rural in nature gives this area its distinction. In doing so, it prevents uh, a level of urban sprawl. This point was highlighted by the previous planning inspector. The loss of trees and hedges and the resulting loss of wildlife habitat is also of concern uh, to the, the general population in the area, which is a loss of space for people to enjoy. I'm concerned that the crowding of the proposed properties to the rear of Atwood Terrace and the area around St David's Church Hall the loss of privacy and the increased noise will be a continuing concern. This will, of course, be exacerbated during the development stage. And I do trust that members will give due weight concern to any objections raised by existing residents when such developments, if such developments were permitted, could bring noise and working time. The plan also requires the demolition of two retail premises, including the former co-op store, which has stood in the, as a prominent feature of the street, helping give the area its character. The shop was also home to an external plaque which commemorates the dropping of a V2 rocket in the area during the Second World War. I do hope uh, in coming to any conclusion the plaque will receive the protection uh, it deserves as a feature of local historical significance. While the application uh, form states that the site is not visible from the uh, public highway, clearly the two buildings to be demolished are in public view. Our main concern is related to the highways and traffic issues. I'm sure calculations can be made about the expected level of traffic that will be produced by 40 multi-vehicle properties and the myriad of vehicles that would be required to service such a development. This plan relies on traffic entering and exiting from the junction created by this demolition of two buildings. Traffic will enter and leave on that with Terrace and Front Street, which is part of the B6288. There are several concerns with traffic in this area. The proposed junction is near housing and retail premises. In addition, the local Methodist Chapel uh, is on the front street a little further down towards Dur Durham and there's more concern that within a short distance proposed junction of the front street is the entrance to Tudor Industrial Estate which includes the local civic amenity site. This estate already creates a large volume of traffic of all sizes and the current uh, right turn into this site is protected which if a new junction will be created that protection will be at risk. Other well, junctions failing in this area the basic to it yet including the entrance to Tudor Lane this is an urban busy junction servicing both the village and the working men's club and uh, St David's Church. Uh, again, the, you have the proposal that was uh, done at the Black Horse and again that junction adds to more traffic in the area. The proximity of the bus stand on Front Street side, this bus stand is on the main road from Durham and that's serviced by both the number six and the X21. During the day these regular services provide 
a steady flow of buses. A bus parked on the stop would give any driver wishing to pass a restricted view of the road. But this can only increase the risk of vehicles backing up as a result. The challenges for pedestrians crossing this road will not only be helped by the proposals, but without any significant mitigation as your own highways, people have identified, there is no space to make a necessary provision there. Part of the reason for the concern of the residents area is the level of uh, travel and the, the speed in that area. He had myself and uh, my former colleague Barbara Graham did arrange for a 30 mile an hour flashing sign to help reduce traffic uh, speeds in the area, but it still is a major concern uh, for residents and business in the area, the level of traffic and the speed of the traffic. And I know that you've had several uh, representations as the officers highlighted, which are firmly against this proposal. So this proposal has been put with, with uh, concern and passion by the residents. And I do hope you'll take that on board. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you, uh, Councillor Foster. Um, it's always essential when um, uh, town councils uh, raise objections that those objections uh, are clearly um, told to us. So thank you very much indeed. I'm going to take the local member, Councillor Alan Gardner. Are you there, Alan? Good morning, John. Thank you. Uh, pleasure to, uh, to be here. And thank you very much, Mark. It really is appreciated that you've really crossed the I's and dotted the T's on this report. Thanks to what Mark has already said and, and what Neil has, has said in his comments, it's made my job very, very easy. Uh, really, for me, there's three main concerns as well as the traffic. The one is that the report says Atwood Terrace Spennymore, it is definitely Tudor Colliery and the identity of the people there are from Tudor Colliery. The, the objections that have come on the other side of the development come from Tudor Village and again we have a totally different identity. We have two very different settlements and this development will effectively join the two settlements together. That is the first real objection. The second is the encroachment into, into countryside. It, we have three large brownfield sites which are identified to be developed by the County Council. And those alone are gonna produce well over five or 600 houses on top of the, I think over a thousand houses in Spennymoor that are actually planning permission granted and are being built. It's not that we're having too many houses, it's that we need to concentrate on the identified sites, the brownfield sites, before we start looking at the issue of open countryside development. Uh, like I've said, there is the problem with highways. Uh, the members have put in a significant amount of time and effort into the County Durham plan to look at identifying sites for planning. And this never has been and as Councillor Foster has said there, it's been turned down numerous times. We really need to make sure that we, we do stand by what the council looks to do, not just now, but in the future. Mark's done a fabulous job on this report. I hope you take notice of every single word. The number of objections come from everything, from noise to traffic, to countryside, to wildlife, that the local people really do care about their area and that's the reason that there's that number of objections. I do hope members will really look at this report very carefully and will vote with the recommendations of the officer and thank you very much Chair. Thank you Alan for that very clear presentation. I now have an objector Ian Blackburn. Ian are you there? Good morning. Hi, Ian. You're sort of very, very welcome. Uh, now, um, you have five minutes to speak. Um, somebody will shout at you after four. Um, don't let it throw you. Just gather yourself and carry on. And we're very anxious to hear what you have to say, Ian. OK, thank you. Uh, I'm here representing uh, many of the 231 petitioners and the 77 written objections many of them provided by neighbours on, on Atwood Terrace and Front Street. The overwhelming and impassioned feedback is that this housing estate development would grossly affect the amenity and the character that is Tudor Colliery. The planners, the town council, the members, and almost unanimously the residents 
all want and believe that this application should be refused. And I'd like to cover five short points in my five minutes. Um, when I first started looking at the planning guides, I came across the word amenity and I found a definition being um, a positive element or elements that contributes to the overall character or enjoyment of an area. It's the very reason a person wants to live where they do. The residents of Atwood live on a respectable but fairly unspectacular long row of terraced houses. The front doors are just 12 feet from an increasingly busy loud road. It's a road that the commuters use to avoid Thinford roundabout, the buses barrel down every 12 minutes and the emergency services speed through and along which trucks rumble into the trading estate that's opposite. Yet walk through to the rear of the houses away from the noise and the pollution and look out of the window or sit in the gardens and watch the rabbits, there's pheasants, a barn owl that circles the length of the terrace every night and there's even deer in these very fields. Look across the line of open countryside and view all the way to Brantsburg and Willington. This is the feeling of tranquility, this is the amenity, this is the character and the, the area that's been threatened for all my neighbours, many of whom have lived on this street for years and in some cases generations. Safe Policy H17, which you all know better than I, states that a new development should provide satisfactory amenity and privacy for new dwellings and for existing adjacent dwellings and that the development should be in keeping with the scale and form of adjacent dwellings and the local setting of the site. We agree with the findings of Durham Council at paragraph 77, which reads that the development is, and I quote, considered to be entirely out of character with the established plan form of the area. Secondly, moving on to coalescence, um, Tudor Colliery and Tudor Village form two legs of a triangle, as you'll have seen from the original plan. The two villages are ge geographically discrete, they're separated by these green fields and are a very different character. Atwood Terrace being 19th century terraced housing that's typical of the coal fields, with Tudor Village being detached stone houses built around a green and many dating back to the 17th century and earlier. This application would be the latest step in the coalescence of these two very distinct villages. Thirdly, precedent, um, these fields that form an L, sorry, three fields form an L shape around the application have recently been sold from their historic and current farming use. The residents are very concerned that if the current development is allowed to proceed, that it may provide precedent for further development that would entirely lose the separation of the villages. One mismatched sprawl would replace the two current distinct villages. Fourthly, um, consistent findings, um, as Councillor Foster noted, in 1990, uh, a very similar application for the site went all the way to the planning inspectorate in Bristol for adjudication. Senior Inspector Richard Mordy visited the site and in his report wrote, and I quote, the development would have an unacceptably detrimental impact on the form and character of the settlement of Tudor Colliery. Mr Mordy went on to discuss that modern suburban housing would not relate satisfactorily to either the terraces or the conservation area of Tudor Village and that the development would provide an undesirable physical and visual encroachment into the open countryside. Fast forward 30 years to today and the planning legislation may have moved on, but the fundamental findings are consistent One with the minute remaining. independent review by Durham Council, that of harming the distinct character of encroachment and of coalescence. Mr O'Sullivan notes that there exists a history of planning refusal for this site and that little has changed. Finally, necessity. On top of the misgivings, the development of this greenfield countryside is simply not needed. Durham Planning has currently identified supply to cover 6.3 years of demand, and Mr O'Sullivan reports that overall the council has commitments of 16,000 dwellings, almost 1,500 of which are within Spennymoor. Indeed, there are two identified brownfield sites in very close distance. The Merging County Durham Plan makes no provision for this site to be developed, and it represents an unwarranted incursion to the countryside. The ap this application does not pass the nine conditions necessary to provide an exception to the plan. In summary, I and my 231 fellow objectors wholeheartedly concur with the recommendation of Durham Council that this application be refused. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Blackburn. That was excellent. And I particularly enjoyed your definition of amenity for us. That was very helpful indeed. Um, my final speaker is a supporter, Justine Matchett. Are you there, Justine? I am. Hello. 
You are very welcome indeed. Um, and sort of, uh, we promise um, not, not to um, bite your head off. Is this your first meeting? Am I, am I taught correctly this is your first meeting? It is my first virtual meeting, yes, and it's well, also not my application. I'm a stand-in, so I know well, very little. You're, you're absolutely welcome, and uh, th thank you very much. Um, we're very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, you have five minutes, and again, um, Kirsty will shout at you after four minutes. Thank you. Good morning, councillors. I'm speaking on behalf of Litchfields, the agent for this application. Thank you for the opportunity to address Pro proposed refusal reason number one alleges harm to the character and urban form of Tudor Colliery, encroachment into the countryside and coalescence with Tudor Village. Despite regular engagement with your planning officers, they have not recently voiced such concerns. Whilst your landscape officer provided some detailed design comments, there was no landscape objection to the principle of development in this location. The introduction of this issue at such a late stage in the determination process is concerning and does not appear entirely consistent with either your adopted or emerging planning policies. Whilst an indicative layout has been submitted, the detailed design form is a matter which should be considered at reserve matters and should not be used as the basis for refusing an outline application. The second proposed refusal reason notes that the displacement of existing on-street parking would adversely impact both the immunity of residents of Atwood Terrace and highway safety. In response to this, we would stress that the proposed access arrangements were put forward by the Council's own Highways Department. We were advised that all accessibility and highway safety concerns had been satisfactorily addressed and we have seen no evidence to suggest that any new safety concerns have been raised. Where the concern now appears to lie is in relation to the loss of on-street parking for some residents of Atwood Terrace. Mm -hmm. Under the current proposal, the five affected properties would each be provided with their own dedicated parking bay at the entrance to the site, as well as a shared visitor parking space. According to the Council's own parking standards, the existing on-street parking bays are substandard at only two metres wide. Consequently, the new parking arrangements will actually represent an improvement in amenity for Atwood Terrace residents who are currently reliant upon unallocated substandard parking shared with the public and with no guarantee they're able to secure a space. The final refusal reason notes that the applicant has failed to demonstrate that a satisfactory sustainable surface water management system can be achieved. The local flood authority did not formally object to the proposal they simply sought reassurance that SUDs would be included at reserve matters. Since this is an outline application, the master plan which has been prepared is illustrative rather than definitive, and so showing drainage details at this time would have been of limited value. We did, however, confirm that drives and private accesses will be surfaced with permeable paving, and the opportunity will be considered for using swales, filter drains and rain gardens within the drainage proposals. These can be secured via a planning condition. The MPPF makes clear that decision takers may give weight to relevant policies in emerging plans. However, the advice of your officers is that the emerging County Durham plan should not be afforded any weight in your decision making process. Instead, our client's application is being assessed solely against policies in the Sedgefield local plan, which were drafted almost 25 years ago. We do not feel that this approach is appropriate. If you accept the officer recommendation and refuse the application, there will undoubtedly be another appeal. By the time an inquiry into the appeal is heard, the new County Durham plan will have been adopted. This means that it will be its policies rather than those of the old Sedgefield local plan against which the appeal will be assessed. The key emerging policy of relevance is policy six, development on unallocated sites, which relates to sites such as the application site outside of the built up area, but well related to a settlement. We are confident that the application scheme fully accords with all elements of emerging policy six. Since the County Durham plan is at such an advanced stage and the local plan inspector has already confirmed that he considers policy six to be sound, we consider that considerable weight should be afforded to this policy in your decision making process and the failure to do so risks being judged as unreasonable behaviour by an inspector. In accordance with the requirements of the MPPF, the development will deliver a range of social, economic and environmental benefits. 
It will deliver 39 new homes, including affordable housing, helping to sustain the local community. The development incorporates positive environmental measures to provide net ecological gains through habitat creation, enhanced landscaping, and tree and hedgerow planting. The proposal, proposal also includes provision for sustainable urban drainage. The development will generate construction jobs and will increase expenditure in the local economy. The scheme will result in additional home bonus payments and increased council tax revenues, as well as financial contributions towards offsite open space and education. As recognised in your discussions on the earlier applications, the economic benefits resulting from the development should be given, given additional weight in light of the current climate. The spread of COVID-19 and the measures put in place to contain it are having a significant economic impact which will be felt for some time. Developments such as this will be crucial in boosting the economy, stemming unemployment and supporting the house building and construction industries. And on that basis, we would urge the committee to approve the application. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. That was an excellent presentation with lots of very interesting points. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to ask at this point um, the officer um, if he has any points to make about any of the presentations. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of the points that were raised there. Um, sorry if they're in a bit of a hickledy order, but um, in terms of the weight given to the County Durham plan, so at the minute we have to determine the application based on the policies, the relevant policies that are in place at this point in time. Paragraph 29 of the case officer's report talks about the weight and the significance of the County Durham plan. We won't deny that it is obviously going to come into place soon, but at the minute we cannot give any weight to it. So we've given weight to the Sedgefield Borough local plan policies, which although were approved in 1996, they are still relevant and they're assessed in given weight in accordance with the MPPF. So they do have weight and we are applying those policies. Um, in terms of the, the drainage issue that was raised, it's an outline application. We agree that a lot of information can be left to reserve matters, but there is still a minimum level of information that is required to make the application sound so it can be determined as you know it's workable. On this occasion, our drainage team in-house has objected to the application, stating that the minimum level of information they require hasn't been provided. In terms of ecological gain, there's reference made to the, the benefits, the ecology benefits of the site and planting, that sort of thing. What we're forgetting here is that it is already an open field with massive ecological benefits and put very simply and bluntly, you don't want to build 39 houses in it and provide some offset to it. In terms of the, the COVID issue, yes, houses need to be built. They need to be built somewhere, but in the right place. What the local planning authority here is arguing is that this is not the right place and the reasons in, for, are given in the case officer's report. And finally, in terms of the displacement of parking issue raised, um, I think it's refusal reason number two. So highways have basically said from a highways point of view that they are happy with the application based on the access that is shown as long as it can achieve the necessary visibility displays. What we're arguing is to achieve the necessary visibility displays that will come at the expense of local amenity through the displacement of vehicle parking elsewhere. That is long established vehicle parking on the side of Atwood Terrace. Residents who are now forced to walk further afield to park their car in less secure locations. If we were to try and address that issue to improve amenity, that will come at the expense of highway safety because it won't have the visibility displays. So that's where we're coming from in terms of refusal reason number two. I think that is everything. Thank you. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, throwing it open to members of the committee, um, based on what happened last time, um, where I, I wasn't um, informed of, of um, people wanting to speak, if you think I'm ignoring an RTS, um, put your hand up as well, because it is showing me those. Uh, but can I have um, contributions now from members of the committee? Councillor Jan Blakey. Yeah, it's a very interesting application, um, but personally, on my own level, looking at it the way we can't take the next county plan into being. We've got to work with what we've got. 
And now we'll go that we'll go with the officers uh, thing that they refuse planning permission. Thank you. Thank you. Have we any other officers wishing to contribute to the discussion, please? Councillor John Shuttleworth, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I've been listening to what's been said by the local members. Uh, I think I'll just second uh, what Councillor Blakey said that we refuse the application as in the committee report. Anybody else wishing to speak? I haven't got anybody else indicating they wish to speak. Um, we have heard ex... Oh, Councillor Ivan Jewell, thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to everyone that uh, gave a presentation this morning. It, it has been very, very interesting. Um, I, I, I um, sometimes think that just to go along with you, uh, local members is not always the right thing to do. But I think in this situation, the, um, the, the examples which were given and the objections were given were very sound planning considerations. And therefore, I'm very happy to go along with um, local members and residents' views on this occasion. Thank you. God bless you, Councillor Jewell. Thank you for that. I have nobody else indicating they wish to speak. We have heard extensive comments and um, from both sides, um, I think we're able to make a decision. I'm now going to uh, say I have, um, I have a motion to refuse up, uh, planning, planning approval from Councillor Blakey. Seconded by Councillor Shuttleworth. I'm going to ask now Claire Kuskin, um, uh, unless she has anything to <laughs> stop me messing up, um, I'm going to ask um, Claire Kuskin to take that vote. Claire? Thank you, Chair, yes. Um, Councillor Atkinson, are you in favour or against the motion to refuse? I'd be in favour of the officer's decision to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Bell? In favour of the officer's recommendation to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Blakey? Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Brown? Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Huntington? Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Jewell? Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Maitland? Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Quinn? Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Richardson? Councillor Richardson. Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Shuttleworth. Refusal. Thank you. Councillor Tinsley. Refuse planning permission. Thank you. Councillor Zaire. Refusal. Thank you. Chair, that's unanimous unless you wish to vote. Uh, I would have voted uh, refusal as well, Claire. Um, therefore, um, Planning application in that situation has been turned down. Can I thank members for their participation um, and uh, particularly um, for your patience while we sorted out one or two issues on the second uh, planning application. It's vital we get these things right and I'm very grateful to you for your patience. Um, have a lovely day and uh, unless somebody's going to stop me, I think we can leave the meeting and say goodbye. Um, I, uh, my picture isn't anywhere. Um, and I'm a disembodied boy voice but I wish you well all the same thank you thank you chair thank you bye 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 bye, -bye. bye. bye.